Hey, MVPs, Rico Nose here. Going to talk to you guys about the win total for the Kentucky Wildcats. You guys know the deal. I'm breaking down every single team for the 2024 season. So I do a deep dive. I tell you guys all about the roster, all about the team, and how I think they're going to do next season. I give you a bet to make on the win total. This prepares you going into the season so you know what some of these matchups look like and what I think about the matchups, okay? At least from a money line perspective, I haven't actually assessed the spread because the books haven't let the spread go. But when we look at each team, I'm going alphabetical by conference. All the teams have been done in the ACC. All the teams have been done in the Big Ten. And we're now in the SEC, alphabetical, Kentucky. Let's go. You guys see it here. Win total, six and a half wins. Are they going to win six and a half games? Are they going to win six games or seven? Where do you see them at? So we'll go back and look at 2023. 2023, they went seven and six. They won seven games in the regular season. Remember, the bowl game doesn't count. Conference championships don't count. They had a really easy schedule. They started with probably the easiest schedule in America. They played Ball State, Eastern Kentucky, and Akron. Then they opened up on the road at Vandy. That's four games you can't lose. Four games you can't lose. Then somehow, someway, at home, beat the crap out of Florida. Right? Shout out to Ray Davis. We'll talk about it. And then they started losing games they were supposed to lose. No one saw them beating Georgia. Very surprised Missouri by this point last year. We were like, okay, they're real. You can't beat them. And then they had two weeks to prepare for Tennessee. They did well. Did not get over the hump. Beat Mississippi State. They had no coach. Mississippi State, that is. And then they lose to Alabama. Nobody surprised. Go on the road and lose at South Carolina. That's the one loss no one saw coming. They shouldn't have lost to South Carolina on the road. And then they still beat their little brother, Louisville, on the road. And this is Louisville playing in the ACC title game. This is Louisville having a resurgence with the new head coach and having really good players. Shout out to Jamari Thrash, jo Jahar Jordan, just everybody that's good. Garendo, the whole time, they, they looked great all season. You still couldn't beat Kentucky. And that's just to tell you that Kentucky's an SEC team. They have the right caliber of players in the trenches. It's pretty awesome stuff. So then they go and they play Clemson in the bowl game, and it's a very close game, 38-35. Try to, try to tell me bowl games don't matter. They do. You get extra practice. You get continuity as a team. You get to develop those players that are going to be there for the next following season. I don't want to hear about anybody opting out. They only had four draft picks. The, the, I'm telling you right now, Kentucky only had four players drafted. It's not like they had a whole bunch of dudes that were NFL and set out the game. It's not how it works. Right? We saw what this team is, and they're pretty damn good. They're pretty competitive. They can't beat teams they're supposed to lose to. They can't overcome it. You can't overcome the talent gap. It's that simple. Uh, do I think they're better next year is probably one of the better questions to ask, uh, seeing as you expect them to win another seven games. Do I think they're better next year? The answer from me right now is no. No, I don't think they're better next year, and I'll explain when you go look at their stats, Devin Leary, an NC State transfer, came in, one-year starter. Yes, he's already been experienced. I think he had 35 touchdowns the previous year before. This guy was supposed to show up and knock everybody's socks off. I told you guys he wouldn't. That was part of my assessment going into it. I told you, yeah, I know he's transferring in to replace Will Levis, and he's going with the old offensive coordinator, but I just watched this man stink it up the year before, and I don't believe he's going to do any better despite having some amazing wide receivers. Then you get Ray Davis, a proven 1,000-yard back in the SEC. <clears throat> he already did it at Vanderbilt. He did it before uh, getting to Vanderbilt, and then he shows up and he dominates. And this is the guy that saved their season, 14 touchdowns. Ray Davis saved their season, no doubt in my mind. Okay, uh, A couple things to talk about here. Ky Kyra Sharon or whoever else was a quarterback on that roster at Kentucky, they can't play quarterback, none of them. Not the, not the Wade kid who played the year before in the Iowa game at the bowl game. If you didn't know, back in 2022, he's Keaton Wade. He's now a transfer to Colorado. I can show you guys here. Uh, Destin Wade, I'm sorry, his brother. So Destin here, terrible, terrible performance. Uh, I've never seen anything like it, just gross. And Deuce Hogan transferred to, I think, New Mexico State, if I remember correctly. So no quarterbacks in this quarterback room. I'll talk about it as we go forward. Ray Davis. Fine. Ramon Jefferson. If I remember, Ramon's a transfer. Ramon transferred back in 2022 from a small school. Where did he, where did he transfer from? Give me a second here. I don't like not knowing that answer. He's obviously an uh, undrafted free agent. Uh, where did Ramon transfer from, bro? That's crazy that I can't remember. 2018, 20, look at this, FCS. 
Chance from the FCS. That's why I can't remember it. Huh, where was it? Don't remember. Well, he's gone. Ramon's gone. Uh, Demi Sumo, Sumo, Carneg Bay. I can't say it, bro. We just call him Demi Sumo. Uh, Demi Sumo is a running back transfer from NC State. He was in a group, like a, a committee of running backs at NC State. Weren't very good, but he did follow his quarterback, right? Followed offensive coordinator that he's comfortable with. Followed somebody who recruited him. So Demi Sumo, uh, DSK, Demi Sumo is the only running back left on the roster from last year. That's worth noting and talking about. Yes, they got a transfer coming in. I'll talk about it when I pull up the transfer list. But Demi Sumo's never been that guy, and he needs to be this year, which is unheard of at this point uh mclean hit the transfer portal he's gone nobody else really mattered they had a workhorse in ray davis wide receivers this is the strength of this team dane key the third dane key has been doing it since this is the second year in a row one of the team's leading receivers tavion transfer from 2022 um i think overused overused forcing him the ball trying to get him the rock and I don't think he was the answer for a lot of their plays and a lot of their wins. Barry and Brown needs the football. Barry and Brown is an NFL caliber player. Barry and Brown is one of the fastest players in college football, one of the most exciting and explosive players I've seen on tape. I love everything about Barry and Brown. I just hope he gets more than 43 receptions every year. That's going to be on their new quarterback. I'll talk about it on the next chart. Um, looking in here, Jordan Dingle hit the transfer portal but came back to the school. Uh, Caddis is still there. Cummings hit the portal and left. I want to say Isaiah Cummings went to Louisville. Uh, don't quote me. I'll have to double check that. But I know that Dingle's coming back. Nobody else of significance. Apparently, Anthony Brown Stevens is now in the starting lineup. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's that's great. I'm not I'm not a fan of it. Great kicker, transfer kicker, good stuff. And then we're gonna go look at defense. They're returning so many great defenders. Yes, Trevin Wallace went to the NFL and he's gone. But these leading tacklers they have, and they're, they're coming back. And here's the thing. They have three permanent team captains on the defensive side of the ball. Three permanent team captains. These guys, they believed in them for multiple years now. And one of them is De Deion Walker here. Complete stud, seven and a half sacks coming back. Okay, J.J. Weaver coming back. A seven sack guy those are permanent team captains and the other one is zion childress zion childress former texas state safety transferred two years ago and he's been starting ever since and he's just a leader on and off the field they have a lot of like development within their team they really do the only person they lost to the transfer portal of some significance is keaton wade he went to colorado right with his brother twin brother but everybody else is coming back Shout out to Davin Rayner. They, I guess they don't want to see him on the field. Former Northern Illinois kid transferred in a couple years. This guy's been a starter before. He's, he's ready for reps, and they're just not giving him all the reps. They're letting other people play. Shout out to Silver here, former five-star defensive lineman, transferred in from North Carolina. Still hasn't lived up to any of the hype. More power to him, but they do have bodies, and they do have a lot to rotate with. So looking into next season, what do I see from this team? And why don't I think they're going to be as good as next, like as good as last year's team? I think that they don't have near the experience you need in the SEC at pivotal positions. Like their receivers are great. Dane Key, Barry Brown, complete studs. Fred Ferrier, um, don't know much about him. You know, I know he transferred in and I try to go watch as much tape as possible, but nothing I saw on tape impressed me. I didn't look at him and go, wow, that's a guy that belongs in the SEC. I don't know if it's a favor. I don't know if he knows somebody on campus. I don't know what that transfer is about, but that's not a real one for me. Not at all. And then you have Jamori McClain, former Missouri right, uh, wide receiver, cousin of McClain. Jeremy Macklin. My bad. I said McClain. Macklin. Jeremy Macklin. Jamori Macklin. So he just went for a thousand yards last year at North Texas. I love North Texas. I love um, Eric Morris's offense. Right? That's the new head coach. Just came in. Former offensive coordinator for Washington State and Cam Ward. Former head coach at UIW. The, this guy's great. Eric Morris knows what to do. Got the most out of those players. And I think Macklin cashed in on that. But I really don't think Macklin's an SEC caliber wide receiver. I think this transfer here it gives them depth, but he's not going to make the impact you envision. No, he's not that guy. As a matter of fact, they've lost so many good receivers. And unfortunately for cancer, taking out Lewis uh, down at Troy, that's just an unfortunate thing. But they've lost really good wide receivers because these guys up here are the alpha males of all. These guys are professionals. They really are. So you got NFL wide receivers and they can't get them the ball properly. 
We'll talk about it. Offensive line, they have leaders on the offensive line. It all starts with their center, Eli Cox. This is a permanent team captain, a complete stud. I hope they keep it together up front. Looking at some of these transfers, Jalen Farmer coming in from Florida, I think, uh, never really moved me. I don't, I don't understand some of these moves, but you're trying to get depth. You're trying to find players, but you see a lot of freshmen, FR, <clears throat> really pushing the upperclassmen. They're fine. Their offensive line has been terrible for two years now. Okay, and they try to find answers in junior college ranks. They try to find I think they just evaluate and develop offensive linemen incorrectly at Kentucky. They just don't they don't get it done. But Eli Cox is him. Okay, don't you ever doubt that they have two tight ends that are great. Jordan Dingle and Josh Caddis. They can both play at the SEC level. I, I like both these young men. They just don't get them the ball enough. They don't check down enough, throw it to them, whatever it is. They're getting about 12 receptions, less than one reception a game. That's what they're averaging on the season. And then at quarterback, what do you do? You go out and sign Brock Vandergriff. Brock Vandergriff, uh, a lot of people will call him BFG, B, BVG. I'm sorry, BVG, Brock Vandergriff. Uh, young kid, five stars, supposedly four stars, five stars, coming out of high school. I watched him his whole high school career. I'm in Georgia. I know all the Georgia players. So I, swear, I watched this young man at Prince Avenue Christian playing for his father. It's a 1A school, and I watched him be absolutely dominant. And I loved everything about Brock Vandergriff. And even when he played against Gunnar Stockton, it was Gunnar's junior year, I thought, man, these are some really good quarterbacks. I hadn't seen high-quality quarterbacks like this in a long time. Then they all go to Georgia, and they all sit the bench. And a guy, you know, they end up lo losing out to Beck here. And Carson Beck beats him out. That's no shame. Carson Beck's great. Probably the number one quarterback in the country. But Brock Vandergriff, <clears throat> I like him. And if you don't know who he is or what he is, he's a dual threat quarterback. He's a white guy. He looks like he's not dual threat. He is. He can run. He's got a little John Elway to him. I like Brock Vandergriff. I just don't know if he's an upgrade from what you had last year or the year before. Never seen him on the field at the collegiate level. Never got a chance to start in a game at, at Georgia. So it's a wild card, and it's hard. To, you don't ever want to gamble on somebody's UFC debut. You don't ever want to gamble on an entire season on some wild card because I can tell you they're going to win all their games that they're supposed to win like they usually do and I could be wildly inaccurate and wildly wrong right it could go really bad in a hurry so you got to be careful with that the backup Bo Allen Bo Allen used to be at Kentucky if I remember correctly he was at Kentucky transferred from Kentucky to Tarleton State Played at Tarleton State, transferred from Tarleton to Georgia Southern to go play for Clay Helton, and that pass-happy offense did not get declared eligible last year. Sat out the whole year. Shout out to the NCAA's dumbass. And then he transfers back to Kentucky, and now he's the backup. I don't know much about Cutter Bowley. Just a lot of hype, right? But they, they, everything's riding on Brock Vandergriff. Experienced guy, been around a long time, just has not been on the field. I like him. Running backs, running back room looks anemic. I don't care what they tell me. I don't care what they say. Anemic. Shout out to Demi be, being the starter. <clears throat> like I told you, he's a running back by committee guy. And, yes, they get Trainum coming in from Ohio State. And a former Arizona State, Ohio State transfer. This is a linebacker who moves to running back from time to time and kind of goes back and forth. I'm not sure what you want to do with him. I'm not sure what you want to do with him. That's on you. Okay. Defensive line. Complete stud and walker. Do have depth up here. Do have a lot of big bodies. I think they'll be fine up front on the defensive line. Linebackers. They run a 3-4 defense. All coming back. All their starters from last year. Only missing one guy. Went to the NFL. Oh, by the way. They have Dumas Johnson coming in. Dumas Johnson is a stud from Georgia. Complete stud, okay? And the fact that he started over Rayner, just unfortunate for Rayner because Rayner came in from Northern Illinois, and I'd like to see Rayner become a starter someday. That kid's good, man. He's just a quality linebacker. I like it, but it's a good problem to have. You have depth at your linebacker positions. And then in the secondary, a ton of studs. Uh, j shout out to Jance is done. That's a transfer from Ohio State. Um, story, transferring in from Alabama. Played in a lot of games at Alabama, only two starts. It's his final year of eligibility, and I don't see him starting over Zion Childress. So this is just coming in to be a backup, to be part of the rotation. More power to you. 
but it, it just feels like a, an empty transfer for me. I'm sure Kentucky's ecstatic to have that kind of depth and that kind of player in the rotation, but I don't see him getting any more playing time at Kentucky than he did at Alabama. I just got news for some people. If you can't play at Alabama, you can't play at Kentucky. The, the talent gap isn't that big. It really isn't. You think, oh, man, I'm better than them guys. No, you're not. They're, they're decent. Like I said, they have solid special teams. All right, let's move on. Transfer portal. Who are their additions? So one of the additions is Gavin Wimsat coming over from Rutgers. Like I said, this quarterback room does not look good. It looks really bad. And you're taking Gavin Wimsat, former four-star. They say he's a dual threat, but I don't think he's a dual threat. I think he's a single threat quarterback because uh, he can't pass. So his only threat is the ability to run. He's not a throwing quarterback whatsoever. Really inaccurate. I don't think he's ever completed more than 50% of his passes in his life. Everything's like in the 47% range. Just cannot naturally complete a pass. Like if you saw a guy running a five and out, if you were with your friends at the park and a dude runs a five and out and you want to complete the pass to him, some of us can just put it where it needs to be and this guy will just literally sail it over his head. Doesn't? It's innate. He was born with this inability to throw passes accurately. Gavin Wimsett, not a quarterback. Just letting you know. But they're bringing him in because he has experience. And he could be the backup if things go south and maybe hand it off to these crappy running backs. But we need guys who can throw more than bubble screens to these wide receivers because they have NFL wide receivers. I wish they could utilize them. DJ Waller coming in just to, just to recruit a young kid, 2023. <clears throat> it's just good to get a 6'3 safety. More power to him. Mincy, getting an offense lineman from Tennessee. Pretty good deal. You need depth. You need players. That's a big man, and he can contribute. Like I already told you guys about story. Told you Fred Fair never impressed me on tape at UAB. Watched the tape and just thought, how? why is he here? Who does he know? Does he have pictures? Does he have, like, pictures of you naked or something? He's holding you ransom? There's no way this guy should have a scholarship at the SEC level. That's my assessment. Jalen Farmer moving over from Florida. I feel like it's a recruiting miss, but you could be excited about it. You could. Like I told you, Dumas Johnson, starter, stud. Shout out to him, moving over from Georgia, getting paid. Jordan Dingle, hitting the portal, coming back, good player. Macklin, doesn't really pop on tape for me as an SEC caliber player, but he did show his worth at the group of five level. I wish he would have just stayed at North Texas or maybe moved to a different team in the group of five that would have highlighted his ability. Maybe he should have went to Memphis or something, but he shouldn't have gone all the way back up to Kentucky. He couldn't play at Missouri, couldn't get on the field. I don't see how he gets on the field at Kentucky. There, there's studs in front of him. There's pros there. And I've seen better players leave Kentucky, just keeping it real. Like I told you, Chip train him. If you believe Chip's the, the answer at running back, you'd be the first to tell me so. I don't, I don't believe it. Cottrell, I already told you, it was a terrible transfer coming over from A&M, and it's the truth, and he already hit the portal. He's no longer there. Brock Vandegrift told you his deal. Bo Allen told you his deal. Back in 2022, some of the old transfers didn't work out. There's Ramon Jefferson. Oh, he came from Sam Houston. There it is. Sam Houston. D. Beckwith no longer playing football. Gone. Gone. All these dudes, most of these guys are gone. Okay. It's too, it's too far back for 2022. They did lose four, four draft picks. <clears throat> Pivotal ones. Best linebacker on the team. One of the best defensive backs. Obviously the leader of the team. 14 touchdown, Ray Davis. And then Devin Leary, your starting quarterback. It's tough to lose all those guys. So how do I see them... Do, how do I see them doing in the 2024 season? Let's just cut to the chase after talking for the last 18 minutes. I see them beating Southern Miss to start the season. No brainer. Then you have South Carolina. And this time around, I don't see them losing to South Carolina. I love South Carolina's potential. I'm really excited. But South Carolina is going to be starting a true freshman quarterback. Okay, They have upgraded offensive weapons at receiver. But I just feel like Kentucky at home will beat South Carolina. And this is what they need to do. They need to defend their turf like you wouldn't believe. So that's two wins. I have them losing to Georgia, beating Ohio, no problem. Now they're three and one. Go on the road, lose to Ole Miss. They're three and two. They got two weeks to prepare for Vanderbilt. They should beat Vanderbilt. They should beat Vanderbilt. You got to be careful. Vandy went out and got all of New Mexico State and transferred them in. We know New Mexico State blew out Auburn for a reason. Diego Pavia is him. As long as he's your starting quarterback, it's a little scary trying to stop Vanderbilt. I'm, I'm assuming Kentucky's pedigree is way better. So I'm going there and saying they're winning. So once again, they're going to win, 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 and win. That's one, two, three three four wins at this point they're four and two and then they play at florida i don't like them at the swamp 
I don't like Kentucky winning at the Swamp. It's really hard to win in Gainesville. There's just a different atmosphere and a different caliber of team when it comes to Florida. Florida blew out Tennessee at home last year, and they were just a four or five win team, and they blew out Tennessee. It's just they're a different animal at home. So I'm going to go ahead and say they lose that game. They still have four wins. I got them beating Auburn at home again. Beating Auburn, that's five wins. Not beating Tennessee on the road. Okay, we're staying at five. Beating Murray State, that's six wins. Not beating Texas, not a chance in hell they beat Texas. And then there's Louisville. And they have Louisville at home. Are they better than Louisville? Well, I believe so. I think Louisville lost a, a bunch of NFL caliber players and did not refill them with NFL caliber players. They were better than Louisville last year. And Louisville, I, I love what they're doing. They're trying to find answers in the transfer portal. I love Colin Lacey. Uh, shout out to Ja'Cory Brooks coming over from Bama. They rebuilt their offensive line in the portal. They went and found a tight end from San Diego State, who I'm really impressed with. They went out and they got Isaiah Cummings, the third string tight end from you know, Kentucky. They got Tyler Shuck, who's injury prone. By the end of the season, their starting quarterback might be Brady Allen. That's a sophomore from Purdue, right? Like, they might be stuck with some other shit. Donald Chaney, I saw him fumble at the end of the game against Georgia Tech, and that's how Georgia Tech beat Miami when they were supposed to be taking knees. So I don't know if he's clutch or not. I just feel like they're missing certain pieces, and last year was their year to be very good. They had answers in every position group. I've always been an advocate for Louisville when they're utilizing the transfer portal, but from what I've seen so far, I don't think they have better talent and better answers in each position group to to beat Kentucky. I don't. So at the end of the season, at home, right, at in Lexington, at home, on Kroger Field, I have – Kentucky finding a way to win and if they do that right if they beat everybody they're supposed to beat, that means they beat Louisville at home they beat Murray State at home they beat Auburn at home every game's at home by the way they beat Vandy then they go and beat Ohio they beat South Carolina at home Southern Miss at home all their home they got to win it all seven wins we, we got to go big. So when you go check the sports book, six and a half wins is at a plus 120. I've got them at seven. If they pull it out in that final against Louisville, but they can't lose any games that they're supposed to win. We know they're going to lose games. We know they're losing to Texas. We know they're losing to Georgia. I ain't worried about that. They can't lose to Auburn, South Carolina. They got to pull out all those ones at home, and I think they will. That's just my assessment. College football home field advantage is a big deal. So I'm with it. I got Kentucky over. It's plus 120, meaning it's a value bet. With all value bets, just a reminder, we go and we put one unit on the purples. If you don't know what the color scheme means, maybe you're new to the channel, all purples are one value bet. You can go put your bet in now in the sports book. We're going to collect at the end of the season, kind of like a tax return, just one unit here. So you saw Georgia. I had them at two units. Kentucky, one unit. Believe in the over. Don't go heavy. It's simple. It's a plus 120. Go double your money with a couple extra bucks on the side. I don't know what your unit size is, but for me, it, with this chart here, we're just saying $100. Now, you could do 20. I don't care. You can do 10, but it's worth one. Okay. Shout out to Kentucky. Thank you guys for being MVPs. You guys make my life possible. I'll see you guys in the next video. Your friends don't know, but Rico knows. Good luck, y'all.